We are a God-focused church. May the Lord turn your life around. A people separated unto God. A home for the desolate. A light of hope for all nations. That Jesus is Lord. The convergence of a multitude of greatness divinely called to take territories for God and fulfill destiny. We are the Maker's House, and this is Destiny Word. Coming up on Destiny Word. One of the means you can get through to him is by his own word because he has exalted and elevated his word above his name. You cannot get to know God in depth without studying his word in depth. If you want to know God deeply, you have to study his word deeply. hear the word of God. If you came with your Bible, could you please open to the book of First Peter chapter number 2. I believe that we did that last week. Still want us to do it. First Peter chapter number 2. From the verse number one, your Bible should read something like this. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious let's pray heavenly father we know without a doubt the flower will fade the grass will wither but your word will abide forever we pray that in this time you give us a word that works and on these lips of clay make it an instrument of a blessing to somebody's life speak to me speak for me speak through me that the excellency of the power will be of you, O God. That at the end of the day, your people will be edified. And you, our Lord and God, will be glorified. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who rules, reigns, and has regency. Amen. I want you to look for seven people. Just tap them and say, grow. Tap seven people. Just tap them and just tell them, grow. Seven people. I I'm counting. Those of you who don't like people. Um, you, you are not very neighborly. You, you don't like people that much. And so, yeah. Last week we started and um, we still want to pick it up from where we left off last week. Uh, movement or growth is life. Actually, life is a combination of movement. And movement, as in you being able to move, whether internally or externally, that is what bespeaks life. Anything that is not growing is, is, is either dead or dying. And so for there to be life, there has to be growth one way or the other. There has to be movement. Actually, we say movement is life because constantly yourselves everything even in you are moving fortunately there is a medical doctor here who also did internal medicine and um, you will realize that every part of your human being actually when the body is even at rest and you are either sitting or not doing anything at all sleeping your heart will contract and pump um, and blood throughout the body just to make sure there is movement so that you will be um, um, alive. Your lymphatic system will always make sure it transports lipids and fluids throughout the body so that there is always continuity and there is life. There is a law. There is a law called the law of thermodynamics. Not that every... Um, it's not about weight and um, um, being proportional to the wingspan. That's not... That's also... That is aerodynamics. But in thermodynamics, um, the, it is said that every particle of matter 
has constant random motion. That is supposed to mean that it vibrates, it shifts, it collides, it dances all the time. And so every particle of matter, for there to be life, for there to be anything um, called life, there should be movement all the time. And that is the same thing to do with your spirituality. There should be movement. There should be... You being here simply means that your body, you have gone through phases of movement. You have grown... You started as an embryo. You, there was a fusion of the male and female garment. A zygote is, was formed. You had, you had, you, you had something that was just a tiny drop in the womb of a mother carried you over a nine-month period that grew in the body. You, you grew in the womb. And so when your mom was going for checkup, they could check the baby is not developing too well. Maybe the baby has a problem. Um, maybe uh, the baby cannot survive. There is a problem with the child. The brain is not developing so well. Because it is expected that things should not stay where they are. There should be movement. There should be growth. And it's not just with our physical being, because our physical being, a lot of the growth that will happen to you in your physical nature is unconscious. You did not try to be taller. You grew taller overnight. I, I had visited my family at a point, and I came back and went back within two months. By the time I got back, the first child was taller than I was in two months. And then when he was talking to me, you could, he was doing this. Look, Dad, you're short. And I, and I looked at him, and I, I wish I could punch him. Um, and I was talking to the second one. The second one is also taller than the mother, so technically my, be, my, my height now. Um, I don't know why you are laughing, but, and I was saying to myself that if there was any way anybody could extend their height, especially knowing that some people are being bullied because they are short, everybody would have tried at least to add some inches. So that people will not look down on you. They will not look down on you. Everybody will look up to you. But those ones are very unconscious. You sleep. By the time you wake up, you've added some inches. At a particular age, especially the teenage age of boys, the teenage period, sorry, of boys, you, you see that they, they shoot up just like that. No time they are very tall. But it's not because they wanted to be tall. They just grew tall. It was, it was in them. It was wide, ingrained in them to shoot up because their genes afforded them the opportunity to go tall. Now, unlike spiritual growth, which I want to talk to you about, spiritual growth has nothing to do with unconsciousness. You can grow tall, tall naturally through unconscious medium. In fact, the platform is very unconscious. You don't even have to do anything. If it is in you to be tall, you don't have to pray it, you will be tall. But when it comes to spirituality, it, it takes a conscious and a deliberate effort to grow spiritually. So spiritual growth is not a happenstance. It doesn't, it's not by luck. It's not um, an accident. It doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen. And today that's what I want to talk to you about. Spiritual growth. I just wanted you to understand that it is not like your natural growth where you don't need any involvement. With spiritual growth, there is an involvement. Let me start off by saying that when it comes to spiritual growth, it is an act of the Holy Spirit with the participation of man. Let me rewind and press play. When it comes to spiritual growth, when you are making your affirmation, you said that you, you will grow in your spirituality. Now, spiritual growth is an act of the Holy Spirit with human participation. That means that there are certain things you have to do to grow spiritually. There are certain things. You can't just sleep and wake up and you are, you, you are a big spiritual giant. 
you are taller than the building. And people will be calling, no, that's a spiritual child. No, 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 no. There are some things you ought to do. So although it is an act of God, it's an act of the Holy Spirit, it requires human participation. Look at somebody and tell the person, spiritual growth requires your participation. Now that might be the wrong neighbor. Say neighbor. If you want to grow spiritually, it is a conscious effort. It's a deliberate effort. That might be still the wrong neighbor. Look at another and say, neighbor, and this is for you. Spiritual growth requires your involvement, your participation, and your attention. So technically, you cannot grow because you wish it. It's not a wishful occurrence. It's not something that you can wish it. Oh, I wish I am a spiritual giant and you become a spiritual giant. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. It requires your involvement. It requires your participation. It needs you to get involved. I'm going to lay down certain um, systems or the things that you have to do to grow spiritually. The things that you have to do. Spiritual growth Again, let me issue a disclaimer. The spirit is from God. The spirit is from him. But to make it of him, there are some things that you do that will bring your human spirit in alignment with its source so that there is no disconnect. Now, if that becomes a part of God, then why are we talking about growth? Because spirit in themselves, they don't respond to time. And growth is supposed to be a function of time as well. Because you, you grow, time will grow you. Um, in certain areas of your life, whether it is your human body, milestones, at 4, the person is supposed to do this. At 10, the person is supposed to do it. At 20, the person is supposed to be able to lace his own shoes. If you are 20 and you can't lace your own shoes, if it's not because your stomach is present, uh, preventing you from... But if at, at 20 you can't lace your own shoes, then we say you have a problem. Because we have age or time to it. But the spirit is not time-bound. So why are we also talking about growth referring to the spirit just want you to understand before we get into the test itself those are just used metaphorically as well because the spirit it, it, because the spirit cannot necessarily die because it's from him it has to go back to him it is supposed to be rather the the other aspects of the human existence that is the soul and the body being an, in alignment with what god wants to bring enlightenment to what your spirit can perceive Okay, and so your spiritual consciousness will need certain things to be done for it to get you there. And that's what I am here to achieve this morning. Um, um, so we are talking about your spiritual growth, your spiritual growth. And the first thing that you need, and now there are so many things, I will not be able to go through all of it, but I am just going to make it very simple for you so that everybody can run with those items or those lines to grow your spirit man. The first thing that you need for spiritual growth is the word of God. Look at somebody and say the word of God. Now look at another and say the word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to study and understand the word of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was with God from the very beginning. Without the word, nothing that was made was made. In him is life. The life is the light of man. That light shines in darkness. Darkness comprehends it not. This is the word of God. The word of God is God himself. And so for you to be able to get back to your source, that is God. One of the means you can get through to him is by his own word because he has exalted and elevated his word above his name. You cannot get to know God in depth without studying his word in depth. If you want to know God deeply, you have to study his word deeply. Still to come on Destiny Word. There is something that precedes that promise for you to be evergreen. 
for you to be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that your leaves will not wither and whatsoever you do will prosper there is another word that comes from god what is god saying you will delight in the law of the lord and in his word you shall meditate day and night if it is your desire to find insightful and biblical principles to create wealth and enjoy riches in a godly and fulfilling manner then multiple streams of income is your pathfinder to that end you can also get god's last card an expository on the cross as god's ultimate redemption sacrifice for man's restoration to eternal life and its significance as his blueprint for humanity and when all seems lost and you feel you've come to your wit's ends you can break the roof in order to get the Lord's attention through persistence, which will create an avenue for your breakthrough. You can find all these books on Amazon and at the Brain Hub of the Maker's House Chapel International. Welcome back to Destiny Word. Deep calleth unto deep. And so if you want deeper relationships with God, you have to study his word. I'm not talking about um, on your phone receiving the verse of the day. That, oh, I have read the verse of the day today, so I am fine. No, I'm talking about you making time to study the word of God. Making time. Reading your Bible. Making time. Covering some chapters. Covering some grounds in the Bible. Making time. Like today, I want to make sure by the day today is over, I am done with, say, First Peter. Tomorrow, I'm done with Second. Because most of them, some of them, like Obadiah, is just one chapter. So, I don't need the whole week to study one chapter. Let me master the book of Obadiah. Let me even use the whole week to master that book. And next week, I'll read another. Take the smaller, the smaller um, chapters, the smaller books, and, and clean them first before you get to the weightier ones you have to make time to study the word of god the bible says, blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly you've read it before nor sit in the seat of scornful nor stand in the path of sinners but what does he do he he meditates he delights in the word of god and in his word he meditates day and night the bible says because he does meditation on the word of god then he shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of water and so we misquote it and we say that you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water your leaves will not wither whatever you do will prosper but there is a there is a precedent there is something that precedes that promise for you to be evergreen, for you to be like the tree planted by the rivers of water that your leaves will not wither and whatsoever you do will prosper. There is another word that comes from God. What is God saying? You will delight in the law of the Lord and in his word you shall meditate day and night. The Bible says that and God said unto the man called Joshua, this day put this thing, meditate put it in your heart, delight in it, do not deviate, do not move to the left or to the right, but thou mayest observe to do according to the things that are written therein for if you do that then shall you prosper and so prosperity in the spirit and growth in the spirit is impossible without a careful examination and study of the word of god you can never grow spiritually without giving time and attention to the word i'm not talking about you um, following a YouTube channel and listening to a preacher that is substandard to what God wants you to have you are supposed to burn the midnight candle read the word be instant in season and out of season Paul said study to show yourself approved as a workman that needs not to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth that is the word of God God is saying that there is no way you can get to my level without using my ladder and my ladder is my word because my word is myself you can't know me without knowing my word so I find it strange when I meet somebody and I meet them all the time, young men will come to you 
and um, they are, they tell you that they are they are prophets okay okay prof okay um so how's your ministry like oh you know um um god sent me to you and uh, my even yesterday you know you sent one to me um the person has been having visions and revelations and and in all the revelations he does prophetic ministry in all the revelations he sees me either anointing him or showing him the way or and so i said okay so what is your he came with a seed he came with an offering and i said to him you know what go home with your offering and go and fast and pray properly for one week. I will pray before you come back. Don't leave any offering to mean that you have come to lay an offering. You go home with your offering. You ask most of these young men, so what is your ministry? Oh no, God has called me to prophesy. So they go to church, and the first thing they do is, young ladies, please stand up. In the realm of the spirit, you see, you can never be in the spirit realm without being in the word realm. Because it takes the word realm to open the portals of the spirit realm. There is no spirit without the word, and there is no word without the spirit. Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And so without the word, there can be nothing called spirituality. And so for me to ascend to the tables, higher echelons of spiritual authority, I have to master the word of God. Because without the word, there is no place for spiritual growth. Let me lay some few emphasis on that. Because you see, without the word, you will always be confused even about what is really the voice of God. Because the voice of God can even appear as the voice of man. The voice of God can also appear as the voice of the devil. Read throughout the scripture. There are people who have been confused with the word of God. There are people who heard the word and the Bible says that they didn't know that the spirit of deception was sent to deceive them because they were prophets. And so when they heard the voice of the devil, they thought it was the voice of of God. It's not only that you read the book of 1st Samuel and the Bible says that Samuel had heard his name being called by God and God called the name of Samuel and Samuel woke up and went straight to the room of Eli and said, Master, I heard you call me. He said, no, 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 I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Maybe you are dreaming. He went back to sleep and he heard his name again but this time not once, twice. Samuel, Samuel. He went back to him and said, Master, the voice came back but it's you. You are calling me Master. What why, why are you playing tricks on me? He said, no, 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 no. I wasn't the one talking to you. When you go back and you hear it again, say, Master, speak for thy servant heareth. What was he saying? He was saying that sometimes the voice of God can appear as the voice of man. And so you might hear the voice of a man and also think it is the voice of God. The only thing that can bring you clarity when you are hearing a voice is the word of God. Because God will not contradict his word. And so whenever you hear something you have to cross check it with the word of God when somebody says that he's a prophet an apostle a pope a bishop a cardinal and he tells you that you know what there is a demon that is operating in your life and because of that I have to take you by the beach and I have to give you a holy bath you can just watch through your scripture and you know that by his stripes you are healed not only that it is the blood that washes you clean you are able to check with the word and know that this cannot be from God how can some somebody say that you have a spiritual marriage and for me to break the spiritual marriage I have to sleep with you and in sleeping with you I break the spiritual marriage no 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 he who the son of God shall set free is free indeed and so for me to understand and clearly identify and define the voice of God I can only do it through the word it is the word of God that clarifies the voice of God. Next on Destiny Word. Your destiny program, your, your survival, your success, your significance, and everything that is tied to your life and your destiny will only happen when you find the place where God has for you. For more word and messages preached by Dr. Michael, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, Dr. Michael Bwedinyamiche. And don't forget to click the notification bell to be notified each time a new message is uploaded. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us again next week for another life-changing word from God.
on Destiny Word. Shalom.